I have something to say, but I don't think I'm going to say it. I'm going to hold my peace. I'm going to hold my peace. Do you know what that means? Have you ever heard that before? To hold your peace? Hold your peace means to remain silent when you have, you know, you're thinking something, you have something to say, but uh, maybe you just don't want to say it for some reason. Maybe you are afraid, or maybe you don't think it's appropriate to say it. Okay, but it's in your mind. You have, you're in a situation where you have something to say, but you don't say it. You stay quiet. That's called holding your peace. Okay? So if I say to you, don't hold your peace, that means don't be quiet. Speak. Okay? Say something. So that's that's the opposite. Okay, so so let's say you're thinking about something and you're not sure if you should say it. And I could tell you, don't hold your peace. Just say, say it, speak, okay? So hold your peace means to say, stay quiet. The opposite is to not hold your peace. So do not hold your peace means speak your mind, say what you're thinking, okay? If I say never hold your peace, that means never be quiet in any situation, you know? If you feel like something should be said about something, maybe something in your government, you're not happy about something in your government, if you hold your peace, that means you're going to be quiet and you're gonna keep it inside. But if I say to you, never hold your peace, that means always speak. Sometimes it's hard to speak, right? Guys, speaking is something that's very hard. It's uncomfortable, you know, for some people, some people need to shut up and some people need to speak more, right? Isn't that how it is in life? There's some people who should speak more and there are some people who should speak less. What do you think I am, guys? <laughs> do you think I should speak more or less? Let me know down in the comments. Okay, so a good example of this phrase is weddings. That's probably the most the most common time you'll ever hear this phrase is at weddings. Okay, so the pastor or the priest or whoever is officiating the wedding. Do you know what that means? Officiating? Guys, there's someone coming with their dog there. I'm just gonna go off the path in the snow here and I'm going to stand on this rock all right guys so do you know whoa <laughs> just about fell off the rock can you see me should i face the sun guys there's a oh they're gone now it's about like 50 little birds maybe 100 little birds and a flock flying there probably can't see them because they're so small i love seeing uh like huge flocks of birds doing like a crazy you know, sometimes you see, I don't know, on those animal shows or, or National Geographic shows or whatever, you see those, those like birds. I don't know where these birds live, but you see like millions of birds and they're all moving in some weird formation. It's crazy. Like suddenly the flock of birds is flying and suddenly they, they, they change direction. Like how do they all know instantly that they're supposed to go this way? Anyway, guys, dog is gone. Can go back on the path now um yeah i love birds i love nature guys it's just really interesting kind of mysterious and fish are the same way you see those videos of like a massive school of fish like a, a million fish and suddenly they go this way and that way and like how how do they all know how do they communicate with each other i don't know fish and birds they're cool creatures guys 
All right, so officiating. Do you know what that means? Officiating? It means, like, if you officiate something, it means you, you're the person in charge and you make sure everything is done legally, okay? You're the official. So, like, do you like watching soccer? I love watching soccer. I never really do, but for the World Cup, you know, I always watch the World Cup. So let's say you're watching a World Cup match between Germany and England, okay? At the beginning of the match, they will show you the team of officials. Okay, they will say, today we have a, you know, a team from Paraguay officiating the match. Okay, so this group of people from Paraguay are going to officiate the match. So who's in this group? There's the referee, there are the linesmen, right? Two linesmen who run along the side. They're, uh, they're the video replay referees, right? So you've got a bunch of different people, a group, right? They might say this group is from Paraguay, okay. And they're gonna officiate the match. That means their job is to make sure that England loses. That was a joke, guys. <laughs> their job is to make sure that England loses. England always lose, guys. I, I never cheer for England. How about you? Do you cheer for England in the World Cup? You know, England could be playing anybody. I wouldn't cheer for them. I never cheer for England. They always lose, especially in penalty shootouts. And I'm always happy. I'm happy to see England lose, guys. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so the, the, that group of referees or whatever, they are going to officiate the match. Now, at a wedding, who officiates the wedding? Well, it's the pastor or the priest or whoever is that person right if it's a non-religious wedding very often that person will be a justice of the peace they're called a justice of the peace that's their title not pastor not priest not bishop not whatever okay so if you if you you know are not religious Guys, I just burped. <sighs> Drank too much apple juice before making this video. It's probably why I'm out of breath. I ate some soup and uh, drank a bunch of apple juice and ate an apple. Double whammy. Ate an apple and, guys, it's cold up on the bridge here. Double whammy, have you ever heard that before? Double whammy. Uh, man, it's too windy, guys. I'm gonna go this way. Double whammy means, uh, what does it mean? If something it happens like twice. I don't know, like I said, I, I ate an apple and I drank apple juice. Double whammy, I got two, two doses of apples. All right, so, uh, I forgot what I was saying, guys. Something about uh, pastors and priests. Oh yeah, if you're not religious, you you and you want to get married it has to be official someone has to be there to witness everything and make sure everything is official so you know you go to the I mean how do you do that I think you go to the registry office the registry offices here in Canada are places where you sign documents you you get your driver's license if you want to start a business or you want to, if you, anything legal you go to the registry office usually i think you would go to the uh you go to the registry office and you would say i want to get married how do i get a justice of the peace i don't know i don't know how to do it that's how that's what i would do <laughs> but i'm i'm not an atheist i'm not non-religious so if i got married I don't know. I don't know what I do. Haven't thought about that yet. <laughs> so, uh, guys, 
that's the title, Justice of the Peace. Okay, are you a justice of the peace? But most people who get married here in Canada, I think they get they get married at like a church or a, I don't know. I've I've usually only been to religious weddings where there's a pastor. Okay, I I have been to one wedding where there was a justice of the peace. But um, in any case, that's not important. I just wanted to tell you that term, justice of the peace. So let's say you are officiating the wedding, right? What's something you say? Well, sometimes what that person says at the front of the church, right? Let's say this is in a church. There's the bride and the groom. They're going to get married. What do you say? You say, if anybody objects to this marriage, speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay? If anybody objects to this union, okay, a marriage is often called a union. If anybody objects to this union between Mike and Myrtle, Mike and Myrtle, speak now or forever hold your peace. That means you have to be quiet forever then. If, if you have some reason why they shouldn't get married, you need to say it now. Because it's going to be too late tomorrow, right? Tomorrow you can't come back and say, guys, there's a dog. I always avoid dogs. Maybe it's because I got bitten by a dog. If, remember a few years ago I got bitten by a dog? Still have the scar on my arm, guys. So, um, anyway, so speak now or forever hold your peace. Because if you come tomorrow to the pastor and you say, Hey, uh, you know what? I don't think they should get married. I don't think they should get married. What's the pastor going to say? It's too late. It's too late. You should have spoken your peace yesterday. Okay, so you should have you should have said something. You should not have held your peace yesterday. You should have spoken your peace. Okay, so that's kind of the opposite, right? If you hold your peace, that means you're quiet. If you speak your peace, that is that means you speak. You speak. You do not hold your peace. Okay, so um, dog is still there, guys. Look at this nice snowy canal. Snowed a bunch yesterday. Look at that. Someone already tried to go through there. Is that no, that's a dog. What kind of tracks are those guys? Is that dog tracks or I don't know. Here here they are guys. What do you think? <clears throat> I'm not sure. All right, guys, I'm gonna go this way. So, um, so do you get the difference? Do you see what that means? To speak your peace or to hold your peace, right? Dogs are fighting over there, guys. Can't even make this video. The dogs are not holding their peace. The dogs are speaking their peace, right? So, you know, a wedding is forever. When people get married, that is permanent. That's forever, right? So that's why the pastor or the priest or the justice of the peace will say to the people, they might say, <coughs> they might cough. <laughs> uh, they might say, look, if anybody objects to this union, Speak now or forever hold your peace. Someone's coming up behind me, guys. Why is everybody around me today? I'm gonna veer off the path, guys. And go down here. All right, guys, we made it to this beautiful field of snow. Man, look at that beautiful snow, guys. It's a lot of snow. All right, dog is gone. 
now we have some peace and quiet all right guys well that's 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 all i wanted to teach you today uh is that that phrase you know if any if anybody objects to this union speak an hour forever hold your peace they might say that the pastor might say that because they maybe the pastor wants to know is there any real reason they shouldn't get married does anybody have a reason because if there's no reason we're going to marry them now you know there's going to be this union that starts now and after this it's too late so speak now or forever hold your peace forever remain silent all right guys so there's more people coming up on the path behind me because it's such a nice sunny day actually beautiful day to go out on a walk guys but it is a bit chilly uh, i have to be honest about that it's uh it's a bit windy and uh, the air is pretty cold so i better go grab a cup of hot tea and uh, warm up my hands warm up my lungs and my throat and my fingers because i'm not wearing any gloves but uh, i'm thankful it's a nice sunny day it's beautiful so guys let me know um do you usually hold your peace or do you usually speak your peace do you usually not hold your peace what do you think people should do I actually usually, it, it really depends on the situation. Um, I'm more prone to holding my peace. It means I don't speak enough when I should speak, probably. But maybe also the opposite is true. I'm surrounded by people, guys. So um, if you're prone to something, that means you usually you usually do something. Like if you say, I'm prone to getting sick, I'm prone to catching colds or flus, that means you, your body is kind of, has a natural, it's just, it's natural for your body to do that, right? Your body naturally catches a cold. So are you prone to getting colds? Are you prone to, um, you know, holding your peace? Are you prone to not holding your peace when you should hold your peace? Right? Because uh, a lot of people just talk. With they, a lot of people just speak their mind, whatever they're thinking. But many situations that might be, it might be offensive to someone. It might be, uh, might be rude. It might be, uh, it, it just might not be the right time. Right? Or maybe they should just shut up and keep their thoughts to themselves so I don't know guys there's a time for everything there's a time to hold your peace there's a time to speak your peace there's a time to uh, I don't know time for everything there's a time to drink tea there's a time to make videos time to go for walks in the Sun there's a time to teach English and a time to learn English right so guys thank you very much for uh, you know watching my videos thank you for all your support and for all always smashing that like button and uh hope you're doing great hope you're doing great let me know if you're getting married and uh if i have any objections i will not hold my peace i'll speak my peace guys so well as always from here in beautiful sunny and snowy Alberta, Canada. I uh, love you so much and uh, hope you're doing great. Hope you're staying safe, healthy, and happy. And as always, I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care. Mm -hmm.